Patients in intensive care often has all their vital organs monitored. We monitor their heart function, their brain function, their kidney function, their liver function. We monitor the heart rate, blood pressure, urine output, oxygen saturation, a lot of other parameters. One important organ we often do not monitor routinely is the brain function. I'm going to demonstrate to you a, how we monitor the brain function in a critically ill patient. This gentleman behind me had an aortic valve replacement and a coronary artery bypass graft about four or five days ago. Uh, he's 83 years old. His post-operative course was complicated by prolonged need for ventilation, acute kidney injury, and a need for high-dose vasopressors and honor drugs. Uh, he's currently on sedation, and I'm going to demonstrate to you uh, the use of combined tool that we commonly use in intensive care unit to monitor the brain function. We monitor that by doing a sedation assessment and a delirium assessment. Sedation assessment is often done by using a sedation scale, and that sedation scale, which is validated in the critical patients, is the Richmond Agitation Sedation Scale, or otherwise known as the RAS. And we're going to demonstrate to you how we do a combined assessment between the RAS and a delirium assessment using the confusion assessment method. Uh, Victoria is going to demonstrate to you shortly how to do a RAS assessment. So let's go to Victoria and see how that goes. Can you open your eyes for me? Keep them open. That's good. Can you squeeze my hands for me? Excellent. Okay. How about bringing them up off the bed? Fantastic. Okay, you can relax now. Really good. Um, so I've just used the wrap cord for the patient sedation. It essentially looks at a patient's ability to maintain eye contact as well as follow basic commands. Uh, this patient was able to keep his eyes open and look at me for longer than 10 seconds, and as we saw, obeyed my mother's commands. So he would score a rat score of zero. Now, looking at the documentation of the RAS score. On our intensive care flow sheet, this is something that we document with our neurological assessments. And the RAS index is recorded every four hours. As you can see, this patient has a RAS score of minus two, minus three, and now improving to a RAS score of minus one, and currently his RAS is zero. What uh, we have just seen is that in the last 24 hours, uh, this gentleman had a one RAS, so it's a, a RAS that's changing around the baseline. Now, that is essentially what we describe as feature one of the CAM RCS system, and that's the, the change, acute change in mental state. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to demonstrate the other features of the VM assessment, primarily the inattention and the other two features that are important. Uh, for a CAM assessment, we perform uh, feature one, which is the change in the mental state 24 hours, then we perform an inattention test, which is going to demonstrate, and then we look at whether they have a RAS of zero at this time or not, and that's feature four, uh, and then we do a disorganized thinking, which is feature three. For a positive CAM or a positive delirium, patients need to demonstrate that they had a change in mental state in the 24 hours, and they were inattentive. And on top of those two, that they need to also demonstrate that they have either feature four positive or feature three positive. So we're going to demonstrate all that to you at this at the bit side. Good morning, Leslie. How are you today? Good. I'm Dr. Shahabi, one of the intensive care consultants. I'm just going to Nick, if you could come this way so that we can actually see. Um, um, Liz, I'm going to ask you to do a few things with me, okay? Can you put your hands up in the air for me? Liz, that's the way. What about your legs? Can you put your legs up in the air, one by one? Excellent, excellent. Good, 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 good. So we established that he's able to communicate and, uh, and do the command as, uh, as requested. Liz, can you squeeze my fingers there? Excellent. I want you to squeeze my fingers to if I say the letter A now, okay? Yeah? Liz? 
Okay, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna give you a little trial now. All right. So A. I want to squeeze my fingers when I say A. A. Good, 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 good. Okay. So now I'm going to say a few letters, and I want you to squeeze my fingers every time you hear the letter A. Only to the letter A. Yeah. Can we do that? Good stuff. Okay, let's do it now. S A B E A H A A R and T. So what we demonstrated here is an inattention test that is actually negative. So he was able to squeeze my finger to the letter A appropriately and not squeeze to the non A also appropriately. Patients who are inattentive, they often squeeze to every letter or they often not squeeze at all. And that's the difference between those who are delirious or not delirious. Now for the purpose of of this test, if we're doing a, a CAM test, at this point we would not do any more examination for the delirium status because now he demonstrated that he's actually CAM negative by the fact that he's inattentive. Inattention is the cornerstone of delirium. Patients cannot be delirious if they are inattentive, and uh, and that's why this gentleman now is, is not delirious, he's CAM negative. What I'm going to demonstrate to you is the disorganized thinking because I think it's important. If this was positive, we would have to go into either feature four or three. Now four is that does he have a rest other than zero? We know that his rest at this point in time is zero, so that feature is also negative. I'm going to demonstrate now the disorganized thinking. And with disorganized thinking, we do five tests, four questions, and one task. And he's allowed to make one mistake out of those. So I'm going to demonstrate that to you now. Liz? Hello again. How are you feeling there? Can you can you see my fingers there? Good. Can you put as many fingers up as this? Excellent. Very good. Can you put one more in the other arm, in your left arm? Okay. Good. 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 So that's that's the first question to ask. And remember that I did not say put two fingers up. I said put as many. So he needs to recognize that this is two fingers and then he needs to put this up. So that's, that's one of the things. And then you ask four questions. Two are positive questions and two are negative questions. I'm going to say that now. Please, I'm going to ask you some questions and I want you to nod your head yes or no. Okay? Excellent, excellent. So let's, let's do that now. Can you tell me if fish swim in the sea? They do. Good, good. Can you tell me if we use a hammer to hit a nail? We do. Excellent. Excellent. So there are the two positive questions. Two negative questions is, Liz, can you tell me if a kilogram is heavier than two kilograms? No. Okay, so that's the negative one. And the last one is, Liz, can you tell me if a rock floats in water? Would a stone float in water? No. Good question. So he clearly demonstrated that he was not just inattentive, uh, attention negative, but his disorganized thinking was also clear. He was able to answer questions to common sense questions that everybody would know appropriately and positively. So uh, uh, we're going to go uh, along with the rest of the examination now. And this has demonstrated the use of the combined RAS and CAM as a tool instrument to monitor the brain function in a